Welcome! Do you want to see some cool tips and details on how to build a custom open frame computer? Watch this video to see a graphics card mounted back to back with a mini ITX motherboard. I will use this custom frame made from aluminum extrusions combined with a PCI Express riser cable and brass standoffs. The trickiest part of this build for me was to position the graphics card in the right spot. To start off, let's get rid of this fan shroud. It's blocking the mounting holes. Three little screws are holding this cover to the aluminum heatsink. I know where the top of the graphics card needs to be. I will use this mark as a reference. Now I have access to the mounting holes. With the card in position, locating the mounting holes becomes pretty easy. I will lay it out, mark the holes with my pencil, and follow up with the center punch. Did you ever wonder about this copper ring around the mounting holes? They are extra ground locations and can safely connect with a metal frame. I already drilled the holes for the standoffs, a pilot hole and a final size for the tap. These standoffs need 632 threads. M3 is another common thread size. I chose the Fantex riser cable, 300mm PCI Express X16, which means 16 lanes of data, 180 degrees. The riser cable is a very important part of the build to nail down before finalizing the design. How would you know what cable you need? Take a close look at your motherboard. The length of the actual cable is considerably less than 300mm. The published length includes both plugs. There is a lot of mystery regarding the riser cable. Well, essentially it's an extension cord for the graphics card. It gives flexibility to your design. One side plugs into the graphics card, the other side into the motherboard. Simply plug the card into the cable. Plug the cable into the motherboard. This is a good view of the motherboard, an ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix H470i Mini ITX. Another key design concern is storage space. I spent a little extra for a one terabyte NVMe solid state drive. These are super fast and eliminate extra cables and bolt. Okay, this is an M3 Phillips head screw. I know I said the standoffs were 632, but the inner threads and the outer threads are different. So let's screw this card to the frame. Take notice of this little metal cylinder. It's a magnet and a huge help to prevent drop screws. Now that the card is mounted, let's get the fan shroud back on. Hashtag not spoon served. What's next? Power supply? Another important component of a compact build. This is an SFX power supply. It's about half the size of a standard ATX PSU. The only cables we need from the power supply are the 24 pin and the 8 pin power plugs. This system uses an internally mounted M.2 SSD, so that's all the cables we need. I left just enough room to sneak the cables through the frame with the motherboard installed. First, the 24-pin power plug, and then the 8-pin, which is actually 
two four pins kind of halfway stuck together. Look at that. Ooh, that, that looks crooked. Hold on. If you are curious how I made the faceplate complete with a power button, please take a look at my other videos where I fashion the faceplate from a single piece of aluminum extrusion with hand tools. I have several more build videos that I would love for you to check out. I hope you enjoy watching.